Hello, my name is Megan, and you're watching another segment of the Learn to Monetize More video series. In this tutorial, we're going to teach you the basics of macros in DFP. Sometimes we can construct our ad serving and monitoring requirements in simple terms. Other times, however, it's useful to work with macros, especially when working with HTML5 and other new ad serving elements. DFP features a macro function to accomplish just that. In this video, we're going to teach you some of the basics of using macros and what they look like when you use them. Are you ready? Let's get started. Macros are important because they help you determine the efficacy of a creative. From cache busting and tracking clicks and impressions, macros help maintain accuracy on the reporting end of impressions and clicks for a particular creative. Macros can also assist in serving dynamic creatives, from adjusting height and width to opening a new window when a creative is clicked. Macros have many applications. Every standard creative, image, flash, motif, uploaded to DFP as well as certain third-party creatives that DFP recognizes, will have macros automatically embedded. When it comes to custom creatives and creative templates, things get a tad more complicated. As DFP doesn't automatically embed macros for these types of creatives, you will need to add the macros manually on your end when you traffic the creative, depending on the functionalities you require. There are five different macros that you can add manually in DFP for your custom creatives and creative templates. I will run through each of these five manual options with you today in this lesson. One important point worth hitting home before we get started is that macros are case sensitive. For example, uppercase cache buster works, but lowercase cache buster doesn't. Please keep this in mind as you embed macros into your custom creatives and creative templates. One. Click Tracking Macro The first macro option I'd like to introduce to you is the Click Tracking Macro. What does this particular macro track? Just as the name suggests, it tracks clicks generated from a specific ad. To embed this macro, you need to add a very simple snippet of code within the creative tag. The code string looks like this. You may be wondering where exactly to put the snippet of code. Allow me to show you with this example. Notice. You will want to add the click macro code right after and before the landing page URL. For example, 2. Cache Buster Macro Next up on our list of manually added macros to custom creatives is the Cache Buster Macro, also called a Random Number Generator Macro. Why use a Cache Buster Macro? You may want to prevent a browser from reusing a creative file it's already seen and cached or saved to a memory file. The Cache Buster macro will simply insert a random number each time the ad is called, making it look like a unique creative instead of a cached file. Why is this a valuable macro to embed into your custom creatives? Because cache busting maximizes your inventory and minimizes discrepancies between you and your advertiser's delivery reports. For example, 3. Rendering Macros The third macro type I'd like to discuss is the Rendering Macro. There are a handful of rendering macros. As the name implies, these macros help make sure that the creative renders properly upon loading, looking and functioning as they are designed. I'll briefly walk you through each rendering macro here. A. Destination URL Macro If the creative code needs to include the URL, and if it changes as the creative or template is used across different line items, then you may want to embed a destination URL macro. This particular macro can expand on the URL, whether it be a line items URL or an override set for the creative within the line item. For example, If you notice the format of the destination URL macro, you'll see a common snippet of code. Escape. I'd like to take a moment here and pause on this escaping concept. Escaped, double escaped, and unescaped click through macros. Without getting overly complicated here, whichever you use will depend on the click tracking company. You may find which of the three macros the company requires as specified in the tag with the click equals string in the third party ad tag or custom creative code in DFP. For example, view this table. D. 
DFP also supports, which does exactly the same thing as, we recommend using the second one for clarity, but there's no need to recode older creatives and templates. B. File Server Macro. In cases where your custom creative must call a creative asset, a file server macro is useful. To use the macro, replace file underscore display underscore name with the display name of the creative asset. You can find this in DFP when you view the creative details. For example, C. Height and Width Macro. When the ad serves a height and width macro, it specifies the appropriate size for the custom creative. In instances when you're creating a creative template that you may want to reuse for other creatives of different sizes, this macro is particularly useful. It can save you time by dynamically resizing the creatives as appropriate and deliver to an ad unit size. For example, D. Pattern Match Macro for when you discover new information about the user, such as content preferences, you can embed the pattern match macro to dynamically serve finer tuned creatives that may get a better response from the viewer. For example, E. Target in New Window Macro. The target in New Window Macro expands to a value that corresponds to a target window, as specified by the publisher and ad slot where the creative is being served. There are two scenarios for the target. If the target window is underscore blank, then the macro expands to 1. If the target window is any other value, or if no target window is specified, the macro expands to 0. For example, F. Target Window Macro. When you want the creative to expand to the target window specified for the ad unit, or take the user to a new window or open up a landing page within the window, then the target window macro is a macro you want to embed. Let's illustrate this macro with an example. Consider the DFP underscore news dot com ad unit with a target window set to underscore top and the DFP underscore fashion dot com ad unit set to underscore new. If the target underscore window macro is included in the creative's code, it will expand to underscore top for users at dfp underscore news dot com and underscore new for users of dfp underscore fashion dot com. Here's an example of how you would implement the target window macro in this example. G. Tag for child directed content macro. If an ad request comes from a page with child-directed content, then you can implement the tag for child-directed content macro, or TFCD for short. This macro assists publishers in complying with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. You can also include the macro in redirects or requests for third-party creatives using this format. You may also use in JavaScript to set GPT passback tag requests for child-directed treatment. H. URI Escaping Macro When working with creative templates, not with custom or third-party creatives, and you want to ensure that values that are inserted into URIs are formatted properly with the necessary escaping of characters such as spaces, then the URI Escaping Macro is worth exploring. Let's see this macro in action with an example. If you are dynamically adding query parameters to a URL and some of those query parameters contain spaces, you can use the URI escaping macro to ensure that the query values are formatted into valid strings for a URL. A quick note that the URI escaping macro doesn't double encode characters that have already been encoded. That is, a period is encoded to 3A, but the macro would ignore the macro because it's already encoded into the creative. For example, 4. Video-Specific Macros You may work with ad networks or advertisers who require access to description URLs and refer URLs, both of which double-click for publishers' small business support. A. Video Description URL Macro When using redirect ad tags and you'd like to expand the description URL parameter from the original GPT ad tags description underscore URL query parameter, Please note that the description URL should typically be the same as the refer URL. 
You should specify the description underscore URL on the GPT ad tag if there are embeds where the IMA SDK might not accurately detect the page URL or if you are using video in AdExchange or AdSense for video. For example, use when the macro is inside a URL and use in other contexts. B. Video refer URL macro. Use when the macro is inside a URL and use in other contexts. The video refer URL macro expands to the refer URL, the URL of the page where the video player is located, in redirect ad tags. How does it do this? DFP parses the ad tag's URL query parameter, isolates the refer URL, and replaces the macro text with that URL. It works only with the Google IMA SDK with the following qualifications. Script access must be enabled on the page for this macro to work, and the macro doesn't work inside an iframe. 5. Expand Macros Finally, I'd like to introduce Expand Macros. These are to be used within custom creative code or in a click-through URL. You will most likely use them to track line items with your back-end reporting system. You can match the IDs from DFP with IDs in your own database. The information you store in this way can be useful for troubleshooting. Insert the expand macro at the end of the line's click-through URL. As an alternative, you may embed it at the click-through URL for the creative if you're overriding the line item's URL. See the following table as a guide. B. Pass IDFA Add ID Macro If you want in-app publishers to send a resettable mobile advertising ID, IDFA for iOS, Add ID for Android, to your advertising partners for serving interest-based ads, then implement the Pass IDFA Add ID Macro. Doing so will allow your mobile advertisers and agencies easier access to the advertising ID. C. Preview Mode Macro Use the preview mode macro in custom creative code to prevent counting of preview impressions by your backend systems or third-party systems. The macro expands to true if the creative is being viewed as a DFP preview or false if it's a regular impression. D. Scheme macro. You may want to embed a macro specific to the security scheme of the web page serving the creative. The scheme macro expands to HTTP colon or HTTPS colon, depending on the need. You can put it at the beginning of a URL, for example, E. Site Macro. For instances, you want to expand the domain of the URL parameter in an ad tag, for example, google.com, embed the site macro. This macro may be used to modify your creative based on where the request originates. Please note it doesn't work on ad exchange ads that are marked as anonymous. F. Viewed Impression Macro The viewed impression macro enables DFP to count an impression when a creative is viewed rather than when it's served. Use this macro for interstitial or similar creatives. It expands to a URL that contains the information DFP needs to record the impression, working in conjunction with signals in the ad tag that let DFP know not to count the impression immediately. For GPT, this applies to tags that include for delayed impressions. If the creative is served to tags that don't include one of those signals, DFP expands the macro to This concludes our lesson on embedding macros into custom creatives and creative templates. Macros may take a bit of getting used to, but considering their usefulness in thwarting reporting discrepancies and easing trafficking load times for dynamic creatives, macros are absolutely worth implementing into your custom creatives and creative templates. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to subscribe to our blog to learn to monetize more. Hope to see you here again soon. Bye for now.